um, when they come in. So it, when you guys are in a stream and they're hosting a show, please understand that we're not ignoring you by any means. We are just really focused on our show. So um, in advance, I will say thank you for the favorites. Thank you for your gifts, the gifts, and more so thank you for your time. Because even if you're just here for a few seconds, that's a view and thank you. So, but I'd stick around. Um, this is, this is my baby. Hi, Norcal. Um, this show, I didn't even look on my IG YouTube to see which one of you wanted to go first or if you had to go second or I don't know who's got to work with what and blah, 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 and how you're fitting me in. Um, so if one of the two of you who is on the show today, ladies first, unless she wants otherwise, oh, peace. Yeah, that, that's a, that's a nice response. So Carrie, let me know. <laughs> uh, um, You'll go first. Okay. Um, well, we're going to, so Carrie, in about three minutes, I'm going to let you in the box. I am first going to ask you guys a question. At the beginning of the show, I begin with a quote and a question that I ended last week's show with. Yeah. <laughs> I told you guys I wasn't kidding. I'm a Disney freak. Um, and by the way, the first person who sends me the, the Mickey Mouse gift is probably going to make me scream. So, I can't wait to see it. Otherwise, I'm, sh I'm sending it later <laughs> if I don't see it. <laughs> I was like, they've got a Mickey Mouse gift. And I got really excited. So um, our quote and question is, how we spend our days is, of course, how we spend our lives. What we do with this hour and that one is what we are doing. Listen again. How we spend our days, of course, how we spend is how we spend our lives. What we do with that this hour and that one is what we are doing. If you had one hour, if you had one hour right now to do anything you wanted, what would you do? If you had one hour. Oh man, that was a, that was, I'm so excited because I, I felt like, oh my God, thank you guys so much. Eek! Velma, Beth, I love you guys. Thank you. Be there for a friend. Aw, nice Velma. I think if I had an hour right now to do anything I wanted, I would pick up my grandma and I would pick up my kids and I don't even care what we do. I would just want grandma to come out with us one last time for a good couple hours, you know, one more adventure with grandma. But Beth, at least they're going to leave soon, right? <laughs> All right, guys, if you're just tuning in, welcome to Lessons Learned. I am Silly Lily. We're about to have Carrie in the box. If you could request it, I will still let you know before I let you in. Um, but that way I see that you're there. Um, and we we read the quote. It says, how we spend our day is, of course. Is, of course, how we spend our lives. Stop. What we do with this hour and that one is what we are doing. Um, if you had one hour to yourself, what would you do? And that is our quote and question that we're reading right now. So if you guys had an hour to do anything you wanted, go anywhere you wanted, what would you do? Someone else has got to answer. I think Velma was the only one that answered. If you had one hour right now, anything you wanted, what would you do? <laughs> T, you wouldn't want to get the whole group of us together, you know, and go have lunch. Self-help. There you go, Carrie. I, I, look, bro, 
don't start. And I'm not picking you up and holding you for an hour. Do you hear his tail? He, he went to that door, barked, turned around, looked at me, and then waddled his little butt over here. And now he's no, taking his nose and nudging. I'm not holding you for an hour, dude. You're going to have to be a good boy. Oh, take him to the park, right? Make him little again where they, st where they still wanted us. Take kids again. There you go. I want to go too, Stabby. Oh, that's a good answer, Beastmaster. It's crazy when they get big. All right. Are you guys ready to meet Carrie? Are you ready? Are you ready? What's up, Liddy? All right. Here we go. I'm going to let you in. Here we go. <laughs> All the hands I could get right. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Good, good, good. All right. So, you guys, this is Carrie. Um, it's her first time on the show. We've had some repeats, but we're, we've are we got some new faces today. Um, so, I guess, um, Carrie, first, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. I know it's not easy to make yourself a little bit vulnerable, and that's what you got to do to be on this show. So uh, that being said, guys, one more stream rule. Be kind or you're gone. That's it. I, there is For this one hour a week, there is zero tolerance for any stupidity or ignorance. Um, and if you're just cruel, you're gone forever. And if you're just kind of smart alecky, you're gone for the, the, the rest of the, the show. Um, but Carrie, what are we going to be talking about today? What is your life lesson? how I dealt with coming out of an abusive marriage. So yeah, it's going to be emotional for me, but it is what it is. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Uh, we can, we can cry together if needed. It's okay. I cry a lot. Yeah. So I was married at a young age. I was 20 when I first got married. Then he was military. He got out of the military. He started abusing me more mentally than physically he physically abused me once then i didn't realize it till i was like four hours away from him for two weeks and i was like i need to get out of this so we separated he kept on being clingy and stuff so we had to contact his family to get him out of my life it was rough <laughs> Yeah, so pretty much I've been dealing with it. It impacts some of my relationships that I have had since then, but I'm working on it. I like shut down like in fights because of that. So I'm working on it. I've learned to still be open hearted. Not everyone's going to be the that person. So it's rough to deal with. What if you, you know... <sighs> It's hard when, when you're young and you, you know, you, you know, right from wrong, I guess, but not, not totally, you know, you want to believe that, that the person you love, they, they have to love you back. Right. Like this has to be some kind of crazy phase or something. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think were some of the red flags you ignored at the beginning of this? Like when you started to realize and you started to kind of start putting stuff together, what were some of the red flags that going back, you wish you wouldn't have ignored? with how quick he wanted to get married, um, the his financial problems, I wish I didn't ignore either because it put me in debt. Um, his anger issues, it showed a lot more afterwards. I wish I paid more attention to that. What's the best advice you can give to a person who's younger and thinks they're ready for marriage? Take your time. Make sure it's the right person that you could see you spending the rest of your life with. And make sure the feeling is reciprocal. Yes. Because there's a lot of times that one person is head over heels and the other one's just not. Is so not. Good. Yeah. You know, they, they may they may like you, they may have a love for you, but they deep down already know, you know, and you can tell there's there's the small signs that they let off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I think that a lot of people fail to take their time. They, they want these relationships to work so bad that they, they jump and 
I'm not, I haven't even put my toe in the water yet, let alone jumped. <laughs> like, and that's a whole other, a whole other show. Yeah. Um, what are, like, you know, I guess, um, what were some of the things that you done or you still do to help you on, on like your harder days, I guess, because like you said, you still have some negative effects from, from this relationship, right? I was talking to my family when I can, I work and that gets my mind off it. And that helps a lot because I love what I do. I'm not, so being at a job that I love doing, it helps me get my mind off it. Yeah. Yeah. It really, yeah. And, staying busy helps, you know, you're, you just stay distracted, I guess, right? Like you're, mm -hmm. you're not just sitting around dwelling on, on one or two, the one thing that, you know, yeah. isn't going right. Um, now that you're, you know, out of it and I'm not, I'm not sure how long you've been out of it, but, um, all right. Like, I guess what are some precautionary measures you're going to take going into the next relationship? That's a way I can word it. Well, I've been out of, well, we got separated in 2020, divorced in 2021, and I got engaged in 2021. Again, then things just hit a rough patch and we called it. We broke up three days before we were supposed to get married. <laughs> so, yeah. So I had my fair share of relationships. I will admit that. <laughs> uh, I've been engaged twice. One cheated on me within five weeks, and one cheated on me within three weeks. So I get the two. The two I got two engagements under my belt, but no, no weddings yet. Yeah, the engagement. His mom gave him an ultimatum, and he chose his family over the person he loved. So I don't have any hate towards I mean, him. I have hate towards his mom. Said, <laughs> if, you know, I think that maybe sometimes people use their family as a scapegoat. You know what I'm saying? And maybe, maybe you dodged a bullet and you don't realize it yet. Kind of a thing. You I know? think I did. I think I did. Cause my doctor actually told me the same thing. Cause I had a doctor's appointment like a few days afterwards. And she was like, you probably escaped a bullet. <laughs> I was like, yeah. But I'm glad I'm out of it. I'm glad I'm not married. It would have been another mistake if things didn't work out. So, so guys, if you're just tuning in, this is Carrie. We're kind of talking about how she got married young, and it wasn't the the best relationship that you could be in, um, and they ended up splitting. And we're just kind of going over, you know, how how it's it's not easy to get out of a relationship. It's not easy to deal with the abuse of it, but. Uh, we kind of went over some red flags and uh, how to remain positive going forward. And I think most importantly, y'all, take your time in relationships. Really yeah, try to get to know the person that. that you think you love. Uh, it takes at least a year to get to know most of somebody. And that's not all of somebody because I'm going to tell you right now, everybody keeps one secret or another. <laughs> Everybody's got something hidden. And before getting married, live with the person first so you naturally know if things are true. Isn't it crazy how back in the day you didn't even, you weren't even really allowed alone with, with a person that you were going to get married, you know? Um, it, it, it let alone live with them before marriage, you know? And now we're all like, yeah, I got to make sure that I can tolerate you 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, crazy. Man, oh, man. Dating's changed so much. I'm going to be single forever, y'all. We're just, yeah, I, look, she, we're, we're not really, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another thing I should well, remind I you. Say, it's a young, dumb mistake that I made in my early 20s. It happens. <laughs> Wait, what? What? I try to see this why I don't read comments during the show because then I get confused and I'm stuck. <laughs> like what? Um, make that make sense. Um, I yeah, I don't know. Um, is there anything else you want to add to the whole maybe red flags or taking your time part of this? 
or anything else? Just make sure they're the one and you're comfortable with them and op you can able to open up with them and it's reciprocated. Because that's the only way it would work and you know how they truly feel. Communication, 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 communication. Mm -hmm. Communication, honesty are really the main foundations. And y'all, don't lie and don't enter a relationship pretending to like or be into things that you're really not. Um, like an example is if you are talking to a guy and he's obsessed with, let's say, soccer, okay? I fucking hate soccer. Oh, I said a bad word. I hate soccer. Sorry. Um, but let's say this boy's really cute, so I'm going to pretend to like soccer. Well, now he's going to think that all the soccer stuff he likes doing, I'm going to be excited to go. So he's going to plan all this stuff mm -hmm. around soccer. But I lied. I lied to him at the beginning. T, he's repeating what I said. Y'all are too finger happy. Well, but anyways, don't lie. It all comes out. And when you base the beginning of a relationship off of a lie, and then you're sitting there three months later crying, I don't understand why it didn't work. Because you lied. Yeah. You lied. You started the base of that relationship on a lie. Mm -hmm. That's your fault, not theirs. That's so true. So, if you, you know, and it's okay if, if dude loves soccer. You can be like, yeah, I see you like soccer. I hate it. What else do you like? Camping, I hope. You want to do that Friday? You feel me? Like, you don't have to lie. If they're mm -hmm. going to like you, they're going to like you for you no matter what. Yeah. And yeah, and when you when you when you when you run your own vibe and you feel your own vibe, you're gonna find your tribe. Mm -hmm. But your people can't find you, they can't connect with you if you're out playing pretend. You know, if you're not connected and in it to win it, you're floating. Don't be around. fake, just be your true self. What? I said no. don't be fake, be your true self. <laughs> be true to you you will find your vibe tribe and that's it like that that's it that it's it is that easy and choose happiness definitely learn to choose happiness yeah. um because it doesn't matter what's going on in our lives we can let it ruin our day or we can learn to control it have our moment and put it aside so um carrie is there um, do you have like a stream schedule? Do you have any other events coming up a little bit more? A little uh, bit more about you on here. Talk, talk okay. to us. So I stream when I can, since I work 12 hour shifts and I pick up shifts when I can too. Um, so I stream when I can, like on my days off. Then I'm actually hosting my first battle royale. It's a rookie royale. And that's March 15th through the 18th. If anybody wants to show up and watch, y'all are welcome to. And it's going to be fun. Yes, I think it is going to be. I, I will try to be there. I, I've hosted all these events and stuff, and I need to get back in, into it. It's just my, my schedule, too, has been crazy. Mm -hmm. So, all right, guys. So is there any, are you more of a morning streamer or a night streamer if you do get on? Mixture of both. All right, guys. Make sure you have Carrie favorited. We're going to let her go. Great mm -hmm. job. Again, thank you so much for thank being here. Thank you. I appreciate you. Um, you guys, we are going to now do a little bit of the self-care, self-love segment. And if you are just tuning in, welcome to Lessons Learned. I am Silly Lily. That was Carrie. And we talked about getting through and out of a negative relationship. <coughs> um some red flags and stuff like that um if you guys are looking to be on a show i forgot to do some of this at the beginning because i am scatterbrained um OGJ is my admin i'm not sure where he's in the comments somewhere um but he uh he does a lot of shows for a lot on the app and if you are looking to get on a show 
um, please reach out to Emoji J. And whether you're looking to get on a game show, a talk show, um, what are those cooking shows? There, there's all kind. There's all kinds of shows on this app. It's crazy. Um, your trivia, which I don't like unless it's Disney. But anyways, my point is, even though Emoji J still hasn't put his name in the comments, so y'all can favorite him, Emoji J. Emoji J. He's probably on the phone with his girlfriend, boys. <laughs> but either way, you'll see, <laughs> you'll see him in here at some point. Um, you guys, again, thank you for the gifts. Thank you for the favorites. And even more importantly, thank you for your time. Even if you're in and out, you gave me a view and you spent a couple minutes with us today. So thank you for that. Um, if you're new, extra special welcomes. Um, we don't mean to ignore you during the show, but it is definitely a rule we have that we're to focus on our show and not necessarily interact one-on-one, -on -one, like thanking you for favorites and gifts. So I do try to do that periodically because I do appreciate them. Um, Self-care question number one. What have you done for yourself today? What have you done for yourself today? I ask this question almost every week. You slept in? Nice. Nice. Cut your nails. Ooh, eating breakfast. You decided you're doing the show. Ooh, a spa day. I'm jelly. Relaxing before work. Yeah, I got to work today too. My boss, my my old boss that I'm doing work for again wanted me maybe to go in for a couple hours today, but I don't think I'm going to. Ooh, baking. I love baking. I'm not very good at it unless I have an exact recipe to follow, in which case I can do that, but... All right, self-care question number two. Mm, do I follow the advice I give others? So do you follow the advice you give others? I want to answer yes, but I can't. <laughs> Because I can be like, that man is terrible for you. You should leave him. He's abusive. He's a jerk. But then I'm also the one to be like, but he just had a bad day. It's okay. It's just, you know, like I, ugh. You know, or I'm the one to be like, you shouldn't go to bed without, with, with dirty dishes in the sink. But then I got dirty dishes in my sink. Oh, and then it gets an even to worse too, you know, as far as like life advice and, you know, I'm telling y'all drink your water exercise and here for months, I've barely exercised and I know I'm not drinking half of the water that I'm supposed to be drinking. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. And then number three, question number three is are the people around you, do the people around you give you energy? Do the people around you give you energy? Because if the people around you don't somehow give you a little oomph, they're probably the wrong people. You're, you are who you surround yourself with. You know, and if that makes any sense. Um, you, if you hang out with a bunch of people who play sports, you probably are pretty fit and you play sports, right? You hang around a bunch of people to play chess, you're going to play chess. Um, so, yeah. I, I want to be around people that enjoy doing the things that I do. You know, like me, I need somebody who's active and likes hiking and wants to go backpacking and doesn't mind walking miles upon miles a day, um, fishing, boating, like 
I want to travel. Like, and if you, that, if you want a chance with me, these are things you got to want, <laughs> you know? Um, but I, I mean, not everybody in my life has to want that, but that's like my person kind of thing. But more or less, you know, if I hang out with positive people, it's going to make me a more positive person. If I hang out with somebody that's constantly whining and crying and negative and complaining, that's going to bring me down too. Negativity breeds negativity and positivity breeds positivity. And I will repeat that till I'm blue in the damn face. It's just nobody listens. Nobody listens. All right. I got three tips and then we're going to get Beastmaster in the box. All right. Who wants to guess tip number one? <laughs> Go ahead. And then y'all can yell at me because I know I need it too. Go ahead. Who's going to guess it? When the night's not, no. No, not drink Mountain Dew. Yes, Brittany. Thank you. Drink your water, ladies and gentlemen. It is very important. My answer is no. It is very important that we drink our water. Um, I bought these big water bottles and I'm trying to make sure I drink one a day. I may be getting two thirds of the way through it. Um, damn it. Coffee and soda just taste better, you know, but if I cut out my cup of coffee and my, my soda or two a day, I probably could finish that bottle of water without a problem. But like I opted for some adult beverages and stuff last night. So I didn't get halfway through my water bottle yesterday <laughs> self-care tip number two go outside get up go for a walk if it's nice out go barefoot go barefoot just watch for doggy doo-doo being outside is one of my favorite places to be um, I thoroughly enjoy mother nature and the stillness and just the sounds, the wind, the birds, the crickets and barefoot. Yes. Do you remember when you were a kid and you ran around barefoot outside and you were happy as shit all the time? Whoops. What do you mean you never ran around outside barefoot? What kind of a childhood did you live? I am completely like mind blown at this. I go outside like, don't you guys remember? I go to the cricks and even if it's kind of chilly, I take my socks and shoes off and I generally have the towel and then I rub my stand in the crick with my feet and I just let the water flow. There's reasons to that, man. You know, you, you go outside and, and become one with nature. Mother nature's real. And quite honestly, I'd be way more afraid of her than whatever other, I, I stop making mother nature angry. Get more in tune. Be, oh, that is the worst. You don't remember being barefoot? You guys, like, I watched this lady get stung between her toes and she had sandals on. Welcome, welcome. Yeah. All right. Tip number three. I like tip number three. Cook a nourishing meal. I think a lot of us, thank you, forget that we are what we eat, literally. We are what we eat. Have any of you guys ever heard that saying before? And you're like, I don't get it. We literally are what we eat. If and I, again, I I'm I I have been eating like crap because I don't have a ton of money because my dog just cost me two thousand dollars, right? So I'm a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been eating more processed cheap crap because it's just more affordable, but I don't feel like I did when I was eating my organic homegrown, whatever, 
you know, and I go to the butcher and I pay extra so that the meat that I got is organic and fresh and never frozen and blah, 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 blah. Right. I did that. And it, the, the difference in how I felt is phenomenal, but you got to be dang near rich. A dinosaur chicken, so is my daughter. <laughs> and a cow. Don't don't be it. I mean, I'm a I'm a I I'm a pig. Oink oink. <laughs> we don't have what Lux? You need to bring your kids to America and I'll make you some mac and cheese and dino nuggets and whatever veggie you want. Or a side salad. <laughs> That's what we do. Usually the kids just pick green beans and I'm okay with that. But every once in a while the kid wants a salad. Made of real dinosaur chickens. <laughs> okay, that's I. That's a first. I, <laughs> it, yes, Conrad. The preservatives. Okay, like the preserve. I've got. I got like two minutes. The preservatives that is in some of the foods that we eat is 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 forever mind blowing because I. And I use this example all the time and I'm waiting for someone to make it make sense. So I'll ask it again. Maybe one of you have an answer. Why is it I can go to the grocery store? Okay. And if I want to buy uh, fresh tomatoes, okay. And I, I get, I want, I want enough, you know, to make a jar of pasta sauce, right? So you need about eight tomatoes maybe. Okay. So you got to get eight tomatoes. Um, you got to get seasonings. You got to, you got to, you got to get all the different, whatever else you're putting in it. I put zucchini generally and squash and carrots and sometimes um, other things. And I blend it into my pasta sauce, right? So that the kids don't know that it's in there. So like I'm sneaking these extra vegetables into their pasta sauce when I make it. Okay. But whatever. All right. So, so my, my question to you is why am I paying $8 for just these tomatoes in my hand? Okay. Just the tomatoes. Okay. $8. Here you go. But I can go buy three to four cans or jars of pasta sauce for that same price. Now them jars, you got to pay for the jar. You got to pay for, like I said, the tomatoes, the, the, the machines, the people, the, the, the shipping, blah, 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 blah. But for you just to pick it off the plant and put it on the shelf, it costs a million times more. Why? Someone make it make sense. Because I can't. I can't make it make sense. All right. You guys ready for Beastmaster? I'm going to let me know when you're ready because I've left you sitting down there for a minute and I don't want to catch you off guard. So this year, I'm going to figure out how to grow a few things out here. And I'm going to, all right, here we go. And I'm going to have some of my own produce and do some of my own greens and have some of my own herbs. Why, hello. Hello. How are, are you? Doing? I'm, I'm doing, doing well. great. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Um, I guess let's dive in because I talked a couple minutes longer than I normally do. Um, what what right. is it going to be talking about today? Uh, I'd say the lesson that I should want to pass on for the most part is um, laugh through the pain. <laughs> um, well, there's a lot of really terrible things that can happen in life really randomly and chaotically and, and, and no matter what it is you're going through you can always change how you feel about the situation rather than changing the situation itself sometimes and that uh that helps reprogram you towards a positive attitude i think that's that's like i said before we have to choose happiness we have to learn to choose even in our darkest moments to find the happiness that's going on around us um what are some things that you've noticed that help you maybe change your mindset you know, like how have you kind of made so, steps? For a lot of my life, I've struggled with my own mind and I'll get into that after this question. Um, however, this last year I've made major changes in my life in myself and even come to love myself for the first time. It's crazy that I'm 29 years old just saying that, but, um, and, and it really started with making small changes, making 
changes that were so small that I couldn't say no to them. Going out and smoking a cigarette on the porch and picking up a dumbbell, you know, just doing it five or 10 times. It's nothing to do with it. I know I can do it. So saying no to it was a little bit ridiculous because I was going out there anyway. And then things like that kind of put me into a mindset where I wanted to be stronger. I wanted to be better. I wanted to change. Um, and I think that it's really easy for the brain to fall into the path of least resistance. As we know, psychologically, um, once you get trapped there, it's hard to make those changes. Small ones, small ones make it easier. I agree hundred percent. I, I will unwantingly admit that you are younger than I was before I've learned to love myself because at 42 years old, that's where I'm struggling. Um, I'm struggling to, to, to believe I like, I know that I'm, I'm a good person. I'm a hard worker, but I'm, I'm struggling with the, the, who I am on a, on a personal level. So I can understand that and relate to that. It's, it's everyone else around me sees and says these things. And I don't, I don't see what they say. And I, here, can I give an example? Not to interrupt your time. Absolutely. When when I first lost all the weight that I lost, and I looked at the first full body picture of me that I had on leggings and like a tank top. So they were tight fitting. That wasn't who I see in the mirror. I can completely relate. Right. <laughs> like I looked at the picture and started crying. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, I look so thin. I have pictures right over here from when I was in high school, when I hated the way that I look, when I just absolutely despised everything about me right now. And I do not look like what I thought I was grotesque in my mind. I was, everything was bad about me yeah i i so growing up i was very short i was uh i was chubby uh, i was barely five foot pushing 200 pounds with a gap between my front teeth and an afro hmm. i was oh, the uh, i was the glasses hair. kid i never I learned the... how to manage curly hair until i was in my 30s <laughs> Ooh, well it, you're doing well with it now thank you Oh. Thank you, thank you. Um, so I, yeah, I, 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 I get, I get that. And like, I, I'm, like I said, I'm still working on it. So when I read this, <laughs> graphic, I was like, this is a good one. Uh, what yeah. are, I think I, what <clears throat> you were going to explain something before. And then I started to, blow. Oh, um, a lot of my life I've struggled with my own mind, uh, without getting into way too much when I was way too young, I was diagnosed with PTSD at 10 years old. Um, I, tried to commit suicide for the first time at 14 years old and had several more attempts after that. My mother, rather than trying to take care of the child in need, she would rather put me in a hospital and be able to do her drugs. Narcissistic parents are one hell of a thing to survive. Um, Since then, in my young adult life, I've had 15 suicide attempts, my last being November 18th, 2018. Um, And my last hospitalization was just, just after that. Um, I've been diagnosed in my life with schizoaffective disorder. Um, it's a form of schizophrenia, PT, uh, PTSD, borderline personality disorder, um, manic depression, um, major panic disorder, uh, ADD, OCD, and dyslexia. That's a lot to spit out. <laughs> and then you take a, a lot to handle. Um, um, you from, you know, not that I know you very well but it looks to me like you, you've you overcome a lot and I am very thankful you're here. I, yeah, I was gonna say, I know Stabby, I know I was gonna say, I know someone else who's dyslexic, but the rest of that, I'm now, there, is there, there, there's ways for you to help control some of that, right? Like, like is there- yeah. And I'd like to talk to everybody here who does have mental health issues, no matter what it is, no matter what it is you struggle with, the severity of it doesn't matter. Find what it is that it, how it affects you, find what symptoms you have, how it relates to your life. And looking it up often is the first time to figure it out. I had no clue for 25 years of my life exactly how it was that my brain was so broken that every relationship that I had was more painful than the last. Um, And I do have two daughters, my oldest daughter, Madison, she's eight years old. And my youngest daughter, Olivia turned six, November 21st. I um, have struggled as a parent because, you know, my mother had control of my life for so long and did so much damage and used my own mental health issues against me that I struggled trying to be a parent. 
And um, even with my youngest daughter, I haven't seen her since she was four months old, but that's more on the mom. I uh, haven't been in a relationship in six and a half years since my youngest daughter was born, actually. I have taken that entire time single, trying to rebuild myself. I figured out what it meant to be a man and what I thought it meant to be a father. And then I came back to Oklahoma to try and be a parent again. Sometimes that's not the way things work, but I mean, I definitely have had a long road trying to figure out what it is that affects me and how I can get ahead of it. And that's what anybody can do. For sure, for sure. I think that um, it's important for people to understand that if you're struggling with emotions, if you're struggling with how to express yourself, how to handle situations, whatever it is, don't be afraid to reach out to somebody you trust. And, you know, and the two of you can decide if you might maybe need more of a professional, professional help. I did therapy for years. It was the best thing yes. I ever did for myself. Um, I was caught in a cycle that was really toxic. And I brought it with me into every relationship, every friendship that I have had since I was five. They come to terms that I have, I have intentionally screwed myself out of possible friendships and relationships since I was five. That was a realization that threw me for like a what, <laughs> you know? Um, but you know, it, it, once I talked through it and got through it, it was to, to my knowledge, best that I stay single until I figure out. And I, Absolutely. I, until you recover, until you find what it is that's hurt and find a way to fix it. it took me six and a half years, but I had a lot to work through. Um, and here's another piece of advice for anybody who is worried about the time that they will spend alone in their room, in their head with their thoughts. That's where all recovery happens. That's where all healing happens. It all starts with finding yourself. Um, no, I'd like to also say I've hit some really dark topics. However, these things are not things that affect me emotionally that much anymore. Um, it's hard to talk about because this is the first time I've ever done, I've ever exposed this much of myself on live. Um, but emotionally, I do not feel weight of, by these things anymore. They don't affect me. And that's great. So. That's so important. And I feel like that's, that's that's the realistically you have to live and learn you know life is full of lessons um definition of insanity is repeating this <laughs> over and over and expecting different results so don't do that learn to make the hard changes and honestly if it doesn't scare you just a little bit are you doing it right <laughs> and are you doing the right thing because if you're doing the thing that's comfortable you're doing the same thing every that's sanity. Yeah. Push yourself out of your comfort zone, ladies and Go gentlemen. for that walk. Remington, my dog, helps me a lot with that. Um, but yeah, in the last year, I lost 127 pounds. I started working out consistently. I've made major changes, not just in my appearance, but um, also mentally, because that came with confidence. And I was taught humility long in this life before I ever had any confidence. So try not to be too cocky, but realistically i've i've done amazing things that i really probably shouldn't have been able to and um i hope to i'm writing a novel right now about my life uh, it's called into the mind of a madman um and i want to raise awareness for mental health issues for people who don't know that they're struggling with them yet nice i like that yeah if you could give your younger self any advice Knowing what you know now, what would it be? <laughs> Hi, when you get through it, when you get through it, and you will, it'll be better eventually. <laughs> Remington's my service, Bubba. Yeah. What a cute. He turns a year old on the 18th. Oh, he's young. Yeah. He's young. He's handsome. I have my old man around. Here he is. You want to say hi? I'll hold you for a few minutes if you want to come say. He's like, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Come on. I can't reach you over there. Got to come on this side. Come here. Come say hi to Beast. Oh, oh that is a 
Bad Bobby. Hello, floof ball. He uh he's a grumble. That's a cute that's a cute grumble. Remington knows that I don't like loud noises, so when I say inside voice, he'll tone it down to like low growls to get my attention. You're fine. But he knows a lot of things. He looks both ways before we cross a road. Oh. He goes everywhere with me. Um, yeah, he's lived every minute of his life with me since he was six and a half weeks old. That's my boy. He, 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 he drives me nuts. <laughs> he's a rescue. He drives me absolutely crazy. Um, mm. I think the one thing, if you're in this room right now, you're in the stream and you're listening and you're young and you're dealing with some things and you feel like you're losing control, look at me. It will get better. It will get better. Talk about it. A problem shared is a problem cut in half. Please, 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 you guys understand it will get better. It gets easier, okay? It doesn't mean that some things aren't still going to be difficult in some ways, but it gets easier the more you talk about it and the more open you are and the more honest you are, okay? And find something that helps you cope. For me, it's been writing recently and I didn't really start doing it until about six months ago or so. But creative writing is something I am so fucking good at and I never liked writing, never in my life. But I picked up a pencil one day and I realized my vocabulary and my intelligence, I have a rather high IQ, might help me keep some of this under control sometimes, but it, it, it's something that I love doing. Um, and I actually just started a show for it called Poetic Justice, Thursday nights, 11 Eastern. So if you write or if you uh, feel to want to maybe see what it's like to, you know, maybe find another coping skill or a group of people that understand. Uh, if you guys are just tuning in, welcome to Lessons Learned. I am Silly Lily, and this is a Beastmaster. And we're talking a little Hello. bit about mental health um, and kind of all different <laughs> of it, but more or less how you, you can push through it and you can be um, successful in your hopes and dreams if you're willing to work for it is kind of what I got out of all of this. Yeah, if I could say the most profound piece of advice that I ever got, it was in my last hospitalization um, in 2018. And my grandmother called me on the phone. She was the only number that I knew by heart. And she lived in another state, but she took time to pick up the phone every time I called when I was in there. And she said to me one day, um, she said, I wish you could find a way to love yourself the way that I do, even if it's just for a day, even if you just pretend, just do it. And like, really try at it. And she said, I think that you would understand that your life is worth living. So, <laughs> I have no idea why that was the only number I could ever remember by heart, but because she was there. they're the best. My grandma is 93 and she's still kicking. Yo, I'm not about the cry on camera though, for real. Okay. I, uh, I, cry. I cry on camera a lot. It's okay. I do, I'm not doing that. Nope. <laughs> I do way too much damage on here to let people have that kind of clout. <laughs> Look, I don't think you understand a lot of people. That's the kind of show that it is. Um, right. I cry with you guys sometimes, you know. Um, that's okay, boop. But uh, at the end of the day, it's, uh, I'm proud of you. I really am. I know I don't know you all that well, but Thank I'm you. glad that you've uh, pulled through and that you're here to, and willing to make yourself vulnerable to share these things to give oh. other people hope. It's so wild. I've had this account for a year and a half and I really only just started streaming a month ago because I had so much anxiety, like so much social anxiety built up. And I did that and did a couple featured shows performance based and it can really broke me out of my shell. And I've had a really helpful family like Lucifer in the city is a really amazing place to be in. Um, good people. So also shout out to them. They gave me a place to change and become who I am today. I like that. I like that. But all right, I will let you go. Is there anything else you wanted to add? Oh, if your face be is kind, there, I'll let you stay. For be kind. Minutes. But I, I get in trouble if you black box for too long. <laughs> be kind. It costs nothing to just 
you know, choose to be kind. And then do you have specific streaming hours? I know you just mentioned your poetic show, uh, Thursday nights. Um, is there any stuff you've got coming on? Um, an auction May 3rd or 30th. Sorry. It'll be my first auction, uh, kind of a big deal. So, uh, if you want to get involved with that, talk to emoji J, um, super excited about that. But, uh, my streaming hours are generally later. A lot of writing gets done at night because there's less hustle and bustle throughout the house, less tasks you've got planned at night. Right. And, uh, that's, that's when I'll be the most creative and chaotic sometimes, <laughs> but I'm funny. Have a good time. Nice. I will, uh, I got you favorited. I believe I favorited Thank you very much. to check you guys out. Um, but I thank you very much for coming on here and sharing this with us. Um, Thanks for having me. Of course. I hope I helped somebody. Have the best Friday. I'll see you soon. You as well. <laughs> All right, you guys are wrapping up the last few minutes. This is a part of the show where I ask you guys what other featured shows you guys like to watch. Post them in the comments. Shout out your shows. My dog is a noodle in my arms. Um, I'm not really sure how this is comfortable for him, but here we are, here we are, here we are. And it's, I, yeah, I, I did have fun on that show. It was, it was a good time. I, no, no, it, uh, with um, Emerald, right? Emerald Empress or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did her show. Um, I, oh my God, I actually let loose a little bit in that show. Um, I was doing some DJing and she's like, <laughs> act out DJing. And I'm like, wee, 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 wee. I was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> we were laughing so hard because the shit I was doing was so goofy. Oh man, oh man, that's three in one show. That's the worst I've ever done. Oh my Lanta. Um, this damn, can y'all see the dog? 